Valence electrons are those electrons in the outermost shell surrounding an atomic nucleus. These outer electrons are important because they inform us of an element's chemical properties, as well as indicating the bond order of a chemical compound. Importantly, covalent bonds are formed by the sharing of valence electrons in the outer shells between multiple atoms. So the number of valence electrons indicates how many bonds are possible. Simply put, these are the electrons that can be gained or lost in the course of a chemical reaction. Rather than tediously counting the electrons in every shell to determine the number of valence electrons, one must simply look at the periodic table. For those who don't know, the periodic table is an orderly arrangement of all elements discovered to this point in ascending order of atomic number, broken up into rows or periods, and columns or groups. As you move down a given column, the number of valence electrons remains the same. The number of electron shells may increase with each subsequent row, but the number of valence electrons will not change. While the row numbers indicate the number of shells, the group number indicates the number of valence electrons. However, this is only true for the main group elements, those elements inhabiting groups 1 through 2 and 13 through 18. But what about the valence electrons for the elements in between? These transition elements are much like other metals in the table. They are malleable, ductile, and can conduct both heat and electricity. The fact that the best two conductors, copper and aluminum, are both transition metals shows the extent to which these properties overlap. However, one cannot determine the valence electron number of a transition element by simply referring to their group number. This boils down to the way electrons occupy shells in transition elements. Although the classic high school explanation of atoms having shells that get filled up by electrons is actually false, this rudimentary explanation does sidestep the complexity of the actual model. First of all, electrons don't occupy rigid and predictable shells around the nucleus. In fact, their location is highly uncertain, but the shells represent where the electrons are most probable to be found. The different levels are technically known as quantum states, and are denoted by what we call quantum numbers. A quantum number is basically a shell, along with subshells known as orbitals, S, P, D, and F. Each of these subshells or orbitals can only accommodate a certain number of electrons. S can hold two, P can hold six, D can hold 10, and F can hold 14. Additionally, there is a key rule that must be followed shells can only be filled in a particular order from left to right. If we were to easily distribute electrons with respect to subshells for calcium with an atomic number of 20, we would have a configuration of 2, 8, 10. More specifically, 2, 2 plus 6, and 2 plus 6 plus 2. However, due to the key rule mentioned above, 4s must be filled before 3d meaning that there are now eight electrons in the third shell and two in the fourth, making the final configuration 2, 8, 8, 2. So is there any easy way to determine the number of valence electrons for transition elements? Ideally, the valence electrons of the transition elements would remain consistent within the groups, but the energy differences between these shells are minuscule and electrons seek stability above all else. Basically, an electron would happily leap to an adjacent shell of relatively equivalent energy in order to attain a more stable configuration, even if this defies our expected shell distinctions. A number of transition elements display this odd behavior, particularly in the inner transition elements, due to the comparable energy levels of F, D, and S orbitals. In other words, the capricious behavior of the valence electrons in transition and inner transition elements, which seem to endlessly shift in uncertainty, makes predicting the number of valence electrons nearly impossible.